Orion and the Dark is a DreamWorks movie that you probably were not aware was coming out, but here it is. It's exclusive to Netflix. It has a pretty stellar cast in here with Jacob Tremblay, Paul Walter Hauser, Angela Bassett, and we follow an 11-year-old boy named Orion who is just afraid of everything, okay? Like, his anxiety is through the roof. The one thing he fears the most above all else is dark. Every time he goes to sleep, he needs some sort of nightlight on. He always asks his parents to leave the door open a smidge so that the hallway light can creep in. So when the embodiment of his worst fear pays a visit, Dark then whisks Orion away on a roller coaster ride around the world to prove there is nothing to be afraid of at night. Now, I went into this movie with practically zero expectations, if I'm being honest. To my understanding, this is based off of a children's book, which, I'll be honest, I had no idea existed. I mean, it, that shouldn't surprise anybody. I'm of the age right now where I think children's books are completely off my radar. So I saw DreamWorks' name was on this thing, and I saw saw some of the cast in here, but then I saw that Charlie Kaufman was writing this thing. Yeah, Charlie Kaufman, you know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, being John Malkovich. He's doing a kid's movie now. And you know what? If Charlie Kaufman's name is on a script, usually it's pretty darn good. And I gotta say, Orion in the Dark surprised the heck out of me, guys. Starting with our stellar voice cast, everybody here does a really good job Jacob Tremblay plays 11-year-old Orion, even though it's very clear that Jacob Tremblay is not 11 years old anymore. I think he does good enough with what he has. And this is a character I would very much liken to a Charlie Brown. You know on the Peanuts? Yeah, Charlie Brown, iconic character, of course. He's the titular character. But Charlie Brown is just anxious about everything. Like, he has the worst luck out of any of the Peanuts gang. And I don't know if it was the performance or the delivery or even just down to the character design, which is honestly pretty basic compared to a lot of other DreamWorks characters we're seeing. But this kid reminded me a lot of Charlie Brown in a lot of ways. I felt so sorry for him. Paul Walter Hauser plays the embodiment of Dark here, and he does really well also. He's an extremely likable, comforting teddy bear presence. It's almost like if Baloo and the genie had a secret love child. Because I don't know, I could certainly tell, especially when you're introduced to this character, there were a lot of Robin Williams-inspired moments for him, and I think it worked out really well. But despite the fact that this setup has some derivative elements to it, this movie is just so freaking imaginative. Right down to the animation actually melding not just the three-dimensional computer animation that we're used to from DreamWorks now. It also seamlessly blends in this sketchbook style of animation. That leads you looking to some pretty gorgeous animation here, guys. And the embodiments of these creatures of the night that you meet along the way have some really cool designs as well. You have Insomnia, who is just paranoid out of his mind. I swear to God, I thought Insomnia sounded exactly like Wallace Shawn. I don't know if it was the voice inflections or what it was, but I know it's it's not Wallace Shawn, just per the credits and the cast list. I just couldn't help but think of Rex and his anxieties also. You have Quiet, which is just a silent cloud. Sleep is just this gigantic Eeyore-looking sloth. And then you have the Dream, who is just this gorgeous-looking hourglass fortune teller creature. It's just such a neat design. That's Angela Bassett voicing Dream, and man does she hit a home run like she usually does. In terms of the animation, DreamWorks isn't the studio that everybody's talking about nowadays, but they're poised to have a really solid year with this one on Netflix. Kung Fu Panda 4 comes out next month. They're still alive and kicking, believe it or not, and I'm so happy to see that because you get imaginative movies like Orion in the Dark, which I really really enjoyed. I think the overall layout and the writing and how this story is told is super adorable and definitely catered to be a family movie that anybody can enjoy. I will tell you my biggest problem with Orion in the Dark seems to be its mixed messaging. This honestly, I, I feel like this all comes down to some of the screenwriting that Charlie Kaufman has here, which isn't bad. This isn't a knock on Kaufman as a talent at all, but I feel like this film is a little bit too complicated for its own good. I'll give this movie credit for the ambition here, because some of the commentary that you see, especially towards the beginning of this movie about what other animated movies are doing, it's a really ballsy approach. But at its core, this movie should have basically been all about this little boy overcoming his worst night nightmares, which it is. And I'm not saying it loses sight of that plot, but it very dangerously teeters on that line where Orion in the Dark kind of loses the plot, and it doesn't really know what the message is anymore, or what the movie's even about. Because there's messages in here about storytelling and how storytelling has evolved, which is not bad at all. It's very clever the way it's presented. But I feel like for this movie, 
the theming should have been a lot more centrally focused than it actually was. As it sits though, I think Orion in the Dark is a very solid animated feature movie that DreamWorks should be very proud of. I think this could honestly be one of the biggest hidden gems of 2024 once it's all said and done. I'm gonna give Orion in the Dark an A-. minus. If you're a subscriber to Netflix, definitely check this one out. Don't miss it. Let me know what you thought of Orion in the Dark down in the comments section, and let me know what your favorite DreamWorks movie of all time is. There's a lot of them you can pick from. Guys, I love discussing all new things in movies and entertainment here on the regular. If you're new, if you hopped onto this channel for the first time, welcome. Do consider subscribing. Tap on that thumbs up as well. If you want to join a community of geeks, film lovers, animation lovers, all things alike, this channel is the right place for you. And stay tuned for more videos very soon, guys. We got Lisa Frankenstein coming out this weekend. I'll be checking that out with my girlfriend. We've also got a pretty jam-packed Valentine's Day with the Bob Marley biopic and Madam Web. Definitely looking forward to reviewing both of those as well. There's a lot in the pipeline, guys. You won't want to miss it. So with all that being said, back talk, commence. Yeah.